Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to How Now Videos. In this video, we're gonna take a look at 10 different selection methods in Revit that will save you a ton of time. So before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss other videos like this one and hit the like button to help the channel out. Okay, let's get into Revit. All right, first things first, if you're new to Revit, make sure that you select things from the edge. Revit by default does not have surface selection turned on, just edge, edge selection, and I would recommend keeping it that way. However, if that really uh, bothers you, you can go up to this little drop down underneath the modify arrow, and you can say select elements by face. So first one is gonna be tab select. So Let's say I want to select a, a ring around my building of all these walls. I can select on this one and then press tab and then it gets the whole ring of selection. Uh, the other uh, tab select, which this one I more so call a chain select. The other tab select is let's say I want to grab just this piece of glass in this curtain wall. I can go in and hover on that edge of where the glass should be, but we see that this mullion is in the way. So I'm going to hit tab. It's going to select the whole wall. I'm going to hit tab again without moving my mouse. It's going to select the actual grid line. If I hit tab again without moving my mouse, it'll say, hey, you might want that edge of glass. Go ahead and give that a left click, and now that glass is selected. If you unpin that glass, then you can actually change it to be a different piece. So let's say I want to turn that to like a solid piece and go and click off of it. Now we can also do a tab select leading into my next one here. Um, so you could select, let's say, a mullion, tab select, tab select, tab select, get that panel back. Then you can do a right click on that and select all instances, visible in view or entire project. Now if I do this now, this is the only one that's solid. If I go back and change this to glazed, and then I tab select until I have that glazed panel back, you can select it, right click on it, and let's see if I can get that back real quick, hold on. Right click on it and then say select all instances, visible in view or entire project. Now I have all of the glass panels selected and now I could unpin them all at the same time and then I can go and update and change those, let's just say to solid in this case, all at the same time. All right, control Z, let's undo that. All right, so then we can get into selection window and crossing window. And so I'm gonna go to just a floor plan view for this one. So let's say I wanna select, um, all of the uh, toilets in this bathroom. If I do a selection window, that means I'm grabbing, clicking, and dragging, and holding from the top left, moving down towards the bottom right. That's very important. I can also go from the bottom left up towards the top right. The idea is that I'm clicking and dragging from the left to the right on my screen. If I go the opposite way, this is what's called a crossing window, and you'll notice that in blue, anything that the crossing window touches becomes highlighted. So you'll see as the crossing window moves across the screen, anything it touches, not necessarily encloses, but anything it touches becomes selected. Now usually after I do a window like that, I do my other selection method, which is called a filter selection. So up here in the green tab, we see some contextual uh, tools based on what has been happening on the model screen. So this is kind of like a special tool set. Anytime you see a green tab, usually it relates to sketching or any kind of special commands. And so I can click on filter and then I can say check none and say, okay, just give me some of those plumbing fixtures and say, okay. And now I have only the plumbing fixtures. If I want to uh, get my previous selection, so let's say I had these uh, toilets selected and then I go to 3D and let's say now I, I uh, maybe click off of it and I don't have those selected, I can hit the control button and the left arrow key and now those items have been become selected again. If I want to see those items that were just selected here in 3D, uh, before I click off of it again, I could go to the glasses here and do a isolate category. And now I see those items that I had selected. Once again, if I click off, control left, selects them again. Okay, now I can go back and just reset that view real easy with the glasses. Sometimes uh, you might have things that are currently in the view, like in the way, maybe these curtain walls, just temporarily I want them gone. We can right click, select all instances, uh, visible in project or in view. Maybe we're working on something inside these lobbies here. And I can just go and hide those now uh, with the glasses. I can say hide uh, elements now. Uh, I'm sorry. I said isolate. Let's reset that. Let's do a control left. And then let's go to these glasses and say hide element. 
There we go. And now I can get in here and select other things easier. Maybe I'm updating the lights, right? So now I have a little bit more control over what I'm able to select. And then I can grab this and just reset. Um, add or subtract from selection. So let's say I have you know this item here. I want to start changing material uh, materials on some of these things. Um, I can go and hold down control, get a little plus sign next to my selection. And let's just say I wanted to make these mullions uh, the same material as uh, this like kind of concrete. I can go and just hold down control. You saw that I accidentally selected this whole curtain wall. That leads me to my next one of subtracting. Hold down shift and now we can subtract. So control allows you to add to your selection and then shift allows you to subtract. And once again, select the edges of those items. Mullions, you can change their materials, but you have to make sure that they're unpinned first and uh, you want just that category. So technically, I might need to do the mullions on a separate selection than this wall. And then with that category, I could go and edit the type and uh, start to mess with like materials and things like that on those mullions. And then group selection. So let's go back to the floor plan for group selection. So let's just say I wanted to copy and paste this bathroom um, with these walls. So I'm gonna hold down control and grab this wall as well. And I wanted to get maybe just all of these items here uh, copied to some other floors. So I could be selecting them like this very carefully, right? With my uh, selection window or holding down control, or I could turn them into a group. And then it's really easy to select them later on. Uh, actually, in the example, they're showing a bathroom partition, right? Here, a bathroom stall as a way to make a group as an example. So um, if I'm going to do this, I probably want to split elements, to be honest with you, kind of near the uh, corners here. So that way, my entire uh, bathroom that I copy is a little bit more independent of everything else uh, in my model. And then I can just go and say, create group. And then this creates a group that if I edit it, it will edit all the other groups that are associated with it being copied. But now you can see the selection is very easy. I can just click and select. I can do a copy on that group and just throw it over. And it looks like it's outside my crop region. So let's just get that out. And then here we can see that these items still do exist. Maybe one wall did not copy that's hosting them. So I might need to make that part of the group. Looks like that maybe did not come with it exactly. But the idea here is that you can group items, you can array them, you can copy them, you can paste them between levels. And this can really help out with uh, selection later on in the process. Just keep in mind anything you do to this group will change the group it came from unless you ungroup it first and then regroup it back into a new group. And then that will now be not associated with the group it came from. All right, very cool. That is it for the video. That was 10 different ways to select in Revit. Okay, I just wanna say thanks for watching. Make sure to save and subscribe and hit the like button if you liked the video. We'll see you all next time.